Hi, Mr. Sapone here, and today we're going to talk about boiling point and pressure. And I start with a question here, why is it easier to boil water on a mountain? And many of you probably didn't know it was easier to boil water on a mountain, um, but as it turns out, it is. If you want to cook some pasta a little bit quicker, you know, maybe take a trip to the Mile High City uh, in Denver, Colorado, or go up on top of a mountain, you should be able to boil water a little bit more easily at a lower temperature than you would at, say, sea level or below sea level. Um, so really, we're just going to get into the question of why. What factors influence boiling point? We know water boils at 212 Fahrenheit or 100 centigrade. What, why? Is that number like universal? Um, so we're going to talk about that. So let's say we have a pot of water um, down in the bottom. We have some fuego. We're hitting it with fire. We know that we have liquid water. It's just changing phase. The water is not disappearing. It's turning into water vapor gas. So it's still the same H2O, the same water molecules. And basically it's evaporating and it's entering into the atmosphere. But the atmosphere is not empty. Um, it's not like this is empty space. If you stick your your hand out of a fast-moving car on a highway, you can really feel that air. You know, we don't normally feel it, but when the wind blows, it's very strong. Or if you're moving fast, you kind of notice how many air particles there are. So in order for water to leave the, the pot, in order for it to turn into a gas, it has to make room, it has to push air out of the way. Um, so what that means is, and think of these are all the air particles, obviously there's lots of atoms, there's millions and trillions and quadrillions, think Avogadro's number from chemistry, lots and lots of particles there. Every water molecule that comes out has to kind of push and collide with some air molecules to push them out of the way. Um, so basically, if there's more air, if there's a higher air pressure, if it's, you know, there's a lot of air, um, heavy atmosphere, then it's going to be harder to boil, more pressure harder to boil. If there's less air there, it's going to be much, much easier to boil. So if you go up a mountain where there's less air above you, it becomes easier to boil something. If you go deep down in a valley where there's more air pushing down on you, um, the column of air is higher up, it's going to be harder to boil something. All that air on top of the water is going to be restricting it from evaporating. Um, and actually, if you go up high enough, there's a point where the pressure can be so low that your saliva will boil uh, on your tongue, only to do to reduce pressure, no heat. There was an, a NASA astronaut, and they put him in these big vacuum tanks, um, you know, because they're practicing for space and whatnot, and he, he lost his oxygen, um, you know, his mask got disconnected one day, and he, he blacked out in a few seconds, 10, 15 seconds, and the last thing he said he remembered before passing out was the saliva on his tongue boiling in the reduced pressure, but it wasn't burning him. It's not a hot boil. It's boiling at a colder temperature because the boiling point of water depends on pressure. Um, we say water boils at 212 because we're pretty much at standard atmospheric pressure, but if we go really high or really low, we can change that a little bit. And what I want you to think of, think of these water molecules leaving the pot of water, trying to turn into a gas. They're like you trying to cross a very busy hallway. If there were no people in the hallway, you can just go right across. But if there's a lot of people, if there's a lot of air, if there's high pressure, it's going to be very hard for you to maneuver across that hallway to the other side. So basically, more pressure, um, it requires a higher temperature to boil something. And now I'm going to show you this in action. I'm going to boil some hot water by reducing pressure in a vacuum pump. And I'm not going to add any extra heat. It is hot water. I'll explain why. All right, so now we're going to use the vacuum pump to boil some water without adding heat. So I do have some hot water in here. I microwaved it. It is pretty hot. I'm going to transfer it to a beaker. You can see the steam. But this water is not boiling. The reason I make it hot is because the vacuum pump's not strong enough to boil cold water. Um, it's not horrible. You can stick your finger in it. It's not scalding but it is definitely hot water. So what I am gonna do is put this in the vacuum pump and then we are going to turn it on. I forgot to seal the, uh, block the air flow earlier, so I'm gonna do that now. And we're gonna turn this on and it should boil as the vacuum pump takes the air out. <laughs> There you go. Boiling water without adding heat. If you think that was exciting, I'm actually going to boil water with ice in a later video, which is one of my favorite demonstrations.
Um, so how do we make water boil? Well, there's two ways you can make water boil. The obvious one is you add heat, you add fire, you heat something up. The other way is you decrease the external air pressure. So there's two ways to make water boil. We just, um, you know, for our practice, practical intents and purposes, if we want to make water boil, we usually add heat. Um, but boiling point does depend on pressure. Um, reducing pressure lowers the BP, boiling point. Increasing pressure raises the boiling point. Um, and that's how a pressure cooker works, which pressure cookers are very dangerous. They allow you to cook water-based foods at very high temperatures because normally water is going to turn from a liquid to a gas at 212. But if you create enormous amounts of pressure, that water can't turn into a gas. Um, so those water-based foods are allowed to get much, much hotter um, than they normally would be. So you're increasing pressure. Um, but again, pressure cookers are kind of like mini bombs. They're very, very dangerous. And you make sure you get a good one and make sure you run it the way it's supposed to be. Uh, run. All right, and last, this is the last thing we're gonna do in this video. It's pretty short and sweet. Um, I'm gonna boil some water with ice. So what I did was I basically boiled water in a flask, a round flask, a flat bottom flask that you can see um, right here. And basically, I put a rubber stopper on top of it. And I let it sit there for like 30 seconds. I might have iced the neck a little bit. Basically, I waited for that flask to the rubber stopper to be secure. And then I'm going to invert it. You're going to see what I'm going to do in the video. Basically taking some pretty hot water, near near boiling water. It's not quite boiling yet, but it is very hot. Um, I am going to put ice on top of it, and it's going to make it boil. Okay, so we are back here with part two. I let this cool for a little bit. Um, I did fail the first attempt, so I did reheat some of this and put more water in it. I made a big mess in here. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to invert this. Put some ice on the top. Hopefully the ice will make this hot water boil. Just in case that connection is not on there perfect yet, I am going to hold the bottom of this. And now I'm going to put some ice right up on the top. I'm slushing melty ice water. And as you can see, we have some boiling going on in there. Try to get some ice to stay on the top and then maybe bring the camera a little closer. Actually, you can see that pretty good from that angle. Um, definitely some good boiling going on in there. So we're putting ice on top of the water and it is making it boil. Why is that happening? Well, the ice is essentially creating a vacuum in there. Um, at the, above the water, that water vapor that's in there is cooling, recondensing and any air in there is cooling, moving less rapidly, creating more uh, less pressure in there. So as we saw with the vacuum pump, you can make water boil just by decreasing the pressure so that's what's going on here uh, this is one of my favorite demos it does surprise you a lot when you first see it how you could actually make water boil with ice because it's completely counterintuitive you think that usually you know you have to heat water to make it boil but you could also boil water simply by reducing external pressure and that's what we're doing right here All right, so I hope you enjoyed uh, these two demonstrations. They're pretty cool. Boiling water by reducing pressure and boiling water with ice, which essentially does the same thing, reduces pressure. Um, so that's boiling point and pressure, Mr. Sapone.